Hi everyone, this is uh, Jason. I'm the developer of the Fire Jumpers Sandbox game. And I'm really excited to show you guys, uh, you know, what I've been working on over the last month or so. Uh, and I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to use the new uh, map editor. Uh, what I've been working on is the topography. I wanted to try to create uh, better hills and valleys uh, and, and show it more accurately uh, than I have done in the past. So let's just kind of jump right into it. Uh, as some of you uh, recognize, this is Stanley Park. Uh, this is based out of in Vancouver. And what we're going to do is you may notice that the terrain looks a little bit different than it used to. Uh, the shadows are done a little bit different. Now, right now, this is a flat version, and we're going to increase, uh, we're going to change that right now. So, uh, here's the new map editor. Uh, we do have the draw button, which is something that you've seen. Now, the components are done a little bit different, uh, just because I wanted to separate, you know, the draw from the paint, from the elevation. So, we come here, and let's say I wanted to draw some grass. Let's bring down the brush size. I can come over here. And I can just start drawing, drawing some grass in this area. Um, the paint button, I can come over here and take, let's say I want to paint uh, that as uh, trees. I just click in that area and it turns it all into trees. Uh, and then the map elevation, well this one's going to take a little bit more explaining. And it's really great. So here's the elevation. We've got the elevation component. Uh, that is the amount of elevation that is going to be adding to the area so it's kind of like you're just adding more soil or more earth to that area and increasing that elevation by 10 feet at a time that's what the 10 is uh, you can go up to 50 or even negative 50 if you wanted to do uh, you know holes in the ground uh, so like if you're going a negative elevation you're creating a hole the brush size uh, well that's uh, standard basically it's the the size of the brush that's going to be affecting in that area so this is like the default 10 and 10 uh, then you also have the flatten button uh, that I'm going to take a little bit more time in a minute to explain how that goes so with the elevation I can actually start increasing the elevation in an area just by rubbing in that area I mean I'm, I'm mousing down and I'm holding the mouse button down but as you can see, I'm actually increasing the elevation at 10 feet at a time. And the more elevation I add, you'll notice that the shadows uh, start forming where the mountains are. Now, these shadows are uh, cal calculated accurately based on the sun's elevation and azimuth in the sky. So later, kind of like with the, uh, the wind properties where you can change the wind and the fire properties, I'm going to allow uh, players to change uh, the sun direction so they can have, you know, morning, you know, uh, sun, afternoon sun, evening sun, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, so you can see these shadows and they're a lot more, they're, they're, it's a nice little gradient, you know, as I'm, as I'm adding more soil in, in, in the area. So it really kind of gives that natural feel to, to, uh, to the terrain. Uh, now let's go in here because you probably noticed is these these little yellow borders around some of the terrain. Let's just zoom right in here. So these yellow areas uh, indicates that the slope is very steep in the area, uh, which means that it becomes impassable terrain. Now yellow is kind of the mild uh, slope where uh, ground units like cut teams and hose teams, they're going to be able to climb that area, uh, you know, but at a, uh, a speed reduction, probably like 50% uh, speed reduction going up these slopes or down these slopes. Uh, but ground, uh, other ground units like vehicles, they're not going to be able to pass through this yellow area. This becomes impassable terrain, so bulldozers are not going to be able to bulldoze up this slope. It's just too steep for vehicles. Um, now, if I continue to add elevation, so we're just going to keep adding, you're going to start seeing red squares starting to pop up. That means that the slope is now so steep that it's basically a cliff, so no one can get across. So no ground units 
uh, no vehicles, uh, just becomes impassable terrain for everybody. Uh, so this is where, you know, uh, as the fire is starting to get into this area, you're going to have to look for water bombers, uh, you know, helicopters, retardant bombers to help out in those uh, hard to reach areas. Uh, all right, so we've got that in that. Now let me just zoom out and explain a little bit about the uh, flatten tool. The flatten tool is designed to not necessarily add more soil uh, constantly, but it's designed to flatten an area based on the uh, based on a particular elevation at that time. Let me explain. Uh, let's say I come over here. Let me just kind of zoom in here a little bit. At this elevation right here, if I wanted to make all the elevation in the area be the same as this, I would click here and then I would start just dragging this area. Oh, whoops, I'm actually at it. Let me turn on the flatten. So right here, now I can flatten this area. I want everything in the area to come equal to this area. As you can see, I'm not actually adding more terrain in the area. Uh, on top, I'm just trying to get all the terrain in the area to be the same elevation as that area. So it's really great if you wanted to create um, like a plateau. Uh, if you want to take uh, you know the edge off of uh, you know pointy mountains, uh, that kind of thing, it's really great uh, to you know let's say bring up a whole area, top part to be the same height while another part is a little bit lower. As you can see, the, the edge here is all red because this is at a certain elevation and down here is lower and the, the transition of that slope becomes so steep that it creates kind of a little cliff area right here. Uh, now based on uh, the brush size, you can flatten uh, you know, a much larger area right? all at the same time. So now I'm really kind of flatten in this area but it's all kind of gradual so it does um, it, it can help with uh, you know changing some of the, the look and the feel uh, now here we go if we go let's say and I'm just gonna show a few examples if I do a small brush right that means that this area is going to let's see here we go um, it just affects a small area at a time. So you can kind of create like these nice little curves in the area without affecting too much of the road. Uh, then I can come over here, get this side. I'm just going to bring it up, maybe less elevation at a time. Kind of keep that kind of nice. And just keep increasing the elevation in this area. There we go. Now, if I take the elevation to a very high value, then I'm actually adding a lot of soil all at the same time. So you can see it's starting to go up higher, and you see all the little red squares. Suddenly, uh, it's gone up really, really quick. Uh, so yeah, so we've got this, and that's basically how these things go. I mean, if I put a, a, a negative value over here, right? Uh, now I'm basically kind of creating a hole. So if I just come over here, it's going to just start creating this big old hole in the area um, kind of thing. So let me show you some of the examples of what I've done uh, recently. So let's go all the way down to Volcano 4. Um, this is the old volcano. Here. There we go. So as you can see, this area is a lot higher. It's very steep, so nobody can actually climb up into this area. Um, and then I, you can see all of the new terrain. And so it's going to change the strategy, right? Uh, you know, as far as bulldozers or cut teams. Uh, you're going to try to find the path of least resistance between these areas uh, while cutting through the trees. So you're not, you know, because this is going to slow down some of the red areas. You won't be able to cross. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be very, very fun. Um, so that's, that's that map. 
uh, we've got, uh, oops, no, wait. I was just working on this one today, uh, which is kind of cool. It's going to take me a little bit longer to build, but so far it looks okay. Let's go down to this one. All right. So here's the map. Uh, you guys probably have recognized it, uh, but you can see all the new elevations. So I've got mountains over here. Uh, right here, it's so steep. This is kind of like a, a cliff area. So nobody's going to be able to cross through that area. So you're going to have to come over through here or here if you're going to be cutting. Um, roads uh, are never affected by uh, the terrain steepness. Roads are will automatically always be a way to get through certain areas. Uh, in this case, it doesn't look like I have cliffs through the roads, but that's what that looks like. So yeah, so as you can see, it's going to really kind of change the strategy on how things um, will will move. Uh, oh, uh, another thing, which is really kind of cool, and this is kind of a, a good map to show, is the fire model actually will burn uphill much faster. <laughs> So let's change the wind direction a little bit. Let's go and go up here. Now, if you look here, the fire is going to start going uphill here significantly faster. Although you can't really see it through all the smoke right now, but it does climb up the hill faster uh, going uphill, and the fire will actually burn slower going downhill. Um, which is going to really kind of change the dynamics of uh, the game and how you will be strategizing uh, on fixing that up. So I think we've got all that going. I think we're pretty good here. So as you can see, it went up this hill a lot faster. Um, you, you'll notice, I mean, there's still a lot of calculations. i got to kind of clean certain things up. But at least it kind of gives you an idea of what's going to be up on the next, next update. And uh, it's very exciting. Um, all right. I think I'm good for this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I'll keep you guys posted. Thanks a lot.